Greetings, this video on splitting firewood is going to be a little different than what you're probably used to, I uh, hope in a good way. I'd like to be able to just uh, introduce you to some more options and ideas and expand the possibilities a little bit. I would present to you to start off with, uh, before we get cracking here, the idea that the most efficient wood splitting is not by one method. So if you see someone who's like, this is the proper way, proper, one of my least favorite words, to split firewood, uh, yeah, no, whatever it is, doesn't, it doesn't matter what it is. So the truth is we're not going to split firewood in the most efficient way every time. They're just going to, we're not those kind of animals where there's going to be some losses. What I'm going to do is just give you some options that maybe you're not used to. Uh, just to try out an experiment and make it all an experiment you know make your wood splitting an experiment try stuff out don't you know obsess over whether you're doing it the right way just see what works so i usually try to get my firewood split by june 1st it's like the middle of june now so i'm kind of in a rush i need to get this process get like one or two more loads like this and i'll probably be done get it all out in the sun seasoning for the next three and a half months and I'm good to go. So I'm just going to cut this up. We're going to start splitting it and you're going to see that I rarely set down the splitting tool and I rarely pick up a piece of wood and I don't have a stump, any splitting stump here. And I'll tell you why and I'll address, while I'm splitting, I'll address like different talking points and the different arguments that people come up with, which I've probably heard all of before. Um, about why I shouldn't do it the way I'm doing it, why I think you know, there's a place for these methods. But not necessarily, again, to the exclusion of all other methods. I'm just saying, again, you know, expand your horizons, learn a bunch of tools, get more tools in the toolbox, and uh, experiment. Let's get to work. Let's uh, split some wood. So a traditional way that most people split wood is they'll have a big splitting stump and they'll take each piece of wood, put it on the splitting stump, split it, pick up another piece. If the piece needs to be split again, you pick it up again. Uh, there's some disadvantages to that. I'm not saying don't do it. I do it sometimes. I don't even have a splitting block out here that I just pulled back here to split this wood here and dry it out here where it's nice and hot for the summer. I do use splitting blocks occasionally, but the more I split, the less I use them. And I'm not the only one, okay? So a lot of guys who've been splitting wood for a very long time, especially professionally, will start to gravitate away from that. So one disadvantage is you have to pick the piece of wood up, you know, bend over, pick it up, set it down. Set down the splitting tool, pick up a piece of wood, walk it to the stump because let's say I, st I put a stump here like how many of those are you know within one step you know pretty soon i'm either moving the stump or i'm carrying stuff from all the way over here if i split it and it falls apart i'll have to pick it up again put it on lots of bending over lots of lifting lots of walking what if you could eliminate all of that now we're going to work that into our our concept of like an energy budget the other thing is you have to have flat ends right how many times have you picked up a piece of firewood and it's slightly sloped on one end and you're looking for the spot on the stump where it's slightly sloped and turning it to match all that okay well if you didn't have to deal with that that'd be pretty nice too right i rarely use splitting stumps and i more and more just start walking into the pile in hitting stuff that's the first thing if you have heard any or repeated any dogmas about splitting firewood try to start forgetting them and pretending you didn't hear them and just just go well one is that you need a stump like you need a splitting stump right or you're gonna damage your axe head well it depends on what axe you use and what um, technique you use so this is quite dull now it could use a little bit of sharpening but i'm not going to sharpen i probably won't even sharpen it this year this is more like a cold chisel. This is a blunt instrument. And um, I like it that way because like here, it's all gravel. I don't even worry about sticking this in the gravel. Like this is banged into the gravel numerous times this year. 
It's not like I'm trying to do it, but I'm actually not even trying not to do it either. Another one is like always, always go for the cracks. Anything that says always, always do this, always do that. I would, you know, first off, that should, that should set your bullshit alarms off. Those are dogmas that should be questioned, question everything, right? Another one is like always hit it in the center. Now there's situations where if you hit it in the center, it makes all the difference between whether it splits or doesn't. But on something like this, I can hit that off the center, off the edge right there and just pop that side right off. And I don't have to, uh, you know, follow that rule. It's just a dummy rule that shouldn't exist. Anyway, so let's just start splitting and I'm gonna use this pile of wood as talking points. Now I know this wood isn't very large. Another thing we'll hear from people all the time in comments on, on wood splitting like videos like this, me and other people that split this way are, you know, that's not gonna work on this or that or the other thing or the wood I have or, or whatever. Well then don't use it. What I'm talking about is I'm giving you tools that you can use and use them where they work and don't use them where they don't. However, most of those people who say those things have never tried it and you have to try it and you have to stick with it long enough to get good at it in order to know, you know, whether it's the right tool to use for the job. So typically anymore, I'll just start hitting stuff in the pile first thing. And I actually like to have a pile like this where some of it's raised up because it makes it easy to, to split stuff <clears throat> off. Um, I have a double bit ax here. I've never really taken to splitting a uh, saw cut fired with a double bit ax or any ax. I've done it a lot. I just, uh, I kind of prefer my maul. It has a lot more authority. And you're gonna, you're gonna hit pieces that are, you know, this isn't the best way to split them. But keep in mind that in the meantime, you're saving a bunch of work by not picking up the wood. And a lot of hassle, you know? This is like a lot more fun than <laughs> bending over and picking up pieces of wood all day. And picking up the tool over and over and over again. By the way, watch out, I broke a window doing this. Now there's people that are gonna argue too that this is inefficient because there's no backing since it's not on a stump or that even if it's set on the ground, you know, like upright on the ground, that it's too spongy and it's less efficient. Well, again, you have to weigh that against having to stop and pick up the wood all the time and carry it. <laughs> See, right in the dirt, in the gravel, don't care. Now I'm not just I'm not just swinging at the wood. I'm gauging where I should hit it, how I should hit it. And this isn't just me being a meathead and swinging at everything all the time. Those skills and that knowledge are essential to do this well. That was a clean miss there. I need a lot of small wood for this small wood stove that I burn. That's like where my, I burn most of my wood, so the stuff is pretty short. The longer it is, you know, the less likely this is gonna work. Again, not arguing that this is the way you should split your wood all the time. I'm arguing that if you haven't tried it, like a good try, you know, like do it enough to matter and get good at it. Another benefit of this dull axe is that, you know, the most I'm gonna do is break a bone or give myself a contusion. It's gonna be pretty hard. I can't, literally can't cut myself with it. A 
don't know if I could split through that knot right there. Nope. Another thing about using a dull, or not dull, but obtuse edge like this, it's more like blasting wood apart, is it rarely gets stuck. And that's, you know, pretty frustrating and requires energy to yank it back out. I mean, I will get this stuck occasionally in large rounds. Best to learn to split left and right handed and chop. Now, if that was a sharp ax, I would never put my foot here and just hit it. And I don't say never very often. I have a whole video about it. But again, another benefit of dull splitting maul. Also, fiberglass handle. You don't worry about the handle, what it's gonna hit. You don't worry about breaking the handle. At this point, I'd be kind of like proud of myself for breaking this handle. This is like how I typically will approach a pile of wood at this point. If I have larger rounds and I'm unloading them out of a truck or something, I mean, typically I'll split them on site. It just depends on the situation. But I might spread them out and set them up, you know, upright uh, for big rounds. But for anything like this, I start with this kind of approach. Now here's one where I wouldn't mind hitting the crack that exists already. So I just moved around with my foot a little. So right there, I banged the handle against that piece of wood. Don't care. Yes, wooden handles are more comfortable. They're more sexy, but this thing is a performer, you know? It's practical. This is a six pound maul. I actually kind of prefer a five pound maul, but I don't have one working right now. The head, the five pound head I want to use, it needs like a, a fiberglass handle, uh, but it's an axe eye, and I don't want an axe handle, I want a straight handle. Which I don't know if they even make this. I need to look, see if I can order one. Okay, that one's tough. I'm not gonna hit that again without either propping it up or I'm gonna hit it in a different spot. You can see how gnarly it is down around here. Okay. Let's address the flick issue. There's a technique called the, people call it the flick or the twist. It's basically either just coming down on the wood at an angle like this, instead of right up and down, kind of like that, or hitting the wood and then popping it as you hit it. You're not gonna be able to see it, but that's what's going on. That is another technique that everybody should add to their arsenal. The person that really got me using that was Buck and Billy Ray Smith. Shout out to Buck and, and also doing this kind of like freestyle wood splitting too. Yeah, I never really took to it and it, it just didn't stick and I was kind of on the fence about it. But yeah, it's great. And so what it's doing is it's not adding really any energy. It's just taking the energy you have and using some of it to, to create leverage to pop the wood apart, right? So this is basically a lever. So. The ax enters the wood, and then after it's in the wood, this travels downward like that and, and levers the wood open. So you're not adding energy, you're just using the energy you have a little bit more efficiently. You know, I don't use it everywhere. It's just sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. But it's something that everyone who splits a lot of wood should cultivate uh, so you can use it when you want to. Yeah, if you don't know uh, Buck and Billy Ray Smith, check out his channel. He's awesome. So something like this, you know, I might be able to slab a piece off the side depending on what kind of wood it is. But there, I actually, that's the first piece of wood I think I've actually used my hands to move or pick up. There you go. Every time I think a piece is gonna be easy and I, I go easy on it, it doesn't split. Okay, now I'm not gonna pick that up. See how easy that is? Just whoop. So easy. This one I think I can get. Yep, 
if you do this a lot and you start getting good at it, you just, whenever you have to stop and pick a piece up, it's just like, oh, I don't want to pick that up. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. All of this is tan oak and madrone. Not too difficult to split. Again, if it's not working, I don't do it. If I have a bunch of tough wood, if the wood's too big, you know. <clears throat> if there was a block of wood out here to split on, I, I might have picked up a couple of these by now, like that one, and set them on the stump and split them. But I certainly don't need to. <clears throat> Going too easy on these things. Left handed, left handed again. Twist. This looks really knotty and tough. But, yep, we got it. Sometimes it pays to try, sometimes it doesn't. It's very difficult to know every time whether it's gonna work or not. See this piece, this got all kinds of knots in this area. Actually, I don't really need to split that. Like I said, I burn a lot of small wood in the small wood stove, so stuff like this, short stuff I want busted up pretty small. That's a good one. Pop. One thing you need to be careful of when you're using this golf swing kind of method. There, I, I called it the golf swing. I gave in. I gave I give up. Is that you're standing like let's say here's your piece of wood. I highly recommend that you don't be standing here, but that you're standing out in front of the wood, like this and kind of aiming behind you. Because there's a video on that too, I'll link it here, just watch that, but it's super dangerous. I don't do it, I see guys do it quite a bit, even experienced guys. Personally, I won't do it. Oh yeah, I decided I didn't need to split that one. <laughs> I didn't need to split that either. So at some point, it's gonna start getting really tangled up in here and I'm gonna be like, well, it's just getting inefficient. I need to get rid of some of this split wood. And yes, I'm hitting some pieces of wood more than once that I might be able to split in one blow if I set it on a stump. But again, I'm not taking the time to set down my maul. What did I set my maul down and picked up a piece of wood one time so far? Think about that. You know, instead I'm kind of just leisurely Sticking around here, maybe kick some stuff around, hit something, find another target. If you can get that one without moving that piece of wood. And there's a lot of challenge with this too. It's just kind of fun game to play. That one's kind of recalcitrant. Yeah, so this one's got a bunch of knots and gnar. Yeah, I probably didn't even set the mall down, that one piece I picked up before. I don't remember, but you get the idea. Oh yeah, this is, this needs a little something.
left hand. Miss that. And this is a lot harder to do with a six pound maul than it is with a, uh, like an ax. So keep that in mind too. It's harder to be accurate. It's just more work. But for me, I'm probably gonna get through more rounds with one blow than I bow with an ax. I highly recommend trying both. Missed. There we go. And I'll make pretty firewood. I got all different lengths in here. If it's short enough to, I don't stack the short stuff. So if it's short enough to go in the small wood stove, it gets thrown into this thing like a crib. I don't stack it. And if it's long enough to fit in, too long to fit in that stove, I put it in a stack for the other stove. It saves a lot of work too. I don't have, to, I'm not like measuring or anything. And the same goes for splitting, I don't care. It might sound ridiculous, but there are people that like pretty firewood. Whatever, it's, it's all good. I don't make pretty firewood. Yeah, if there's anyone around you too and you're doing this, you really gotta be careful because these things fly. I don't need to split that. I'm about ready for a break here. So my recommendation to people is just ditch the dogma, you know, try splitting without a stump, make it fun, play around. Try like splitting a pile of wood like this, try splitting it with an ax instead of a maul, or try doing this with a maul instead of an ax. Uh, try not touching it with your hands at all, you know, play around. And again, if you don't invest in some of this stuff, should have laid into that harder. Um, you're not gonna get good enough to know what the real potential is, right? Okay, stop screwing around and hit the thing. <clears throat> Try using a dull ax. I mean, I use sharp axes to do this too. There's a whole video, one of the videos I already linked is me using a sh an ax that's ground like super sharp for chopping and it's still in chopping condition when I'm finished. You can still split on the ground by just using that twist or flick method, see? So I pop, I, you know, I slam the wood apart. That's almost through, but it doesn't go into the ground because when it twists like this, it's gonna, it's gonna end up like that. And in many cases, it won't hit the ground at all. It'll just pop up like that. Learn that technique. If you split a lot of firewood, I just think it's worth expanding your game a bit. Getting more tools in the toolbox and using whatever works in a given situation. And again, don't get obsessed with like the absolute most efficient way to do it because that doesn't exist. You're gonna be constantly changing like woods, different tools are better for different woods and sizes of woods, length, species, individual trees, butt wood, limb wood. But yeah, I'm, I'm getting to the point now where it's kind of inefficient. There's like a lot of debris and stuff here that it'd be beneficial to clear out. Whoa, that went through pretty easy. Personally, I'm very happy to be liberated from the classic, like put it on a stump and split it and then pick up another piece. And picking up the pieces that fall and then trying to balance them on the stump. I use very little of that anymore. 
I'll get like a particularly tough piece that's kind of small, pick it up, put it on another piece of firewood or splitting stump, split that, but I don't, I just don't do it very much anymore. And again, I'm not the only one. I have a playlist I'll link here. Wood splitting videos I found on the internet that I think are worth watching. I don't think any of them use splitting stumps. Or maybe one. Definitely not very much. And this is addictive, like, I'll go take a break and then pretty soon I just want to start hitting stuff again. <laughs> You know, or I, I'm like, go get something to drink or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I want to get back and go hit some more pieces of wood. It's fun. <clears throat> Let's see. Maybe use this for a bit. For me, this tool just is not as effective. Oh, by the way, um, you know, this is a great technique if your axe gets stuck, which of course... An axe is going to get stuck way more than a maul. See, I got stuck first blow. Um, you know, a trick is to like turn it upside down and slam it. And people think you can't do that with a double bit. You just have to cut across the grain of a piece of wood like that. So don't, you know, don't hit a piece of wood like this. It doesn't work as well, but it does work. Again, I'm not going to put my foot out here in harm's way. I'm going to keep it behind this line right here. Even that feels a little dicey. cut my bungee cord again. Yeah, pretty much if the mall's around, I'm splitting this kind of wood, I'll usually end up picking the mall up. And when you're using an ax, like something light like this, you definitely want that flick technique. Like that's why I was able to split this and it didn't get stuck, you know. If I'd gone straight in, I didn't hit the center of the tree, there's some gnar in here, you know. If I hadn't used that flick technique, that would not have split that well. With the mall, it's like a little bit more optional. But with this, it's pretty much an essential tool you need to learn. Not that you have to use it every time you split every piece of wood with an ax. Not saying that, I'm saying it's a tool you need in the toolbox if you're gonna use an ax to split wood like this. Again, recommendations, play. Make it fun, try different things. Try them long enough to get good at them because this is very awkward when you first start and it feels like it's not gonna work, but uh, stick with it for a while. Try not using a stump. Try using an ax that you don't mind bashing into the ground. You know, I've been splitting that way for literally years and even if I sharpened that, it's not gonna damage the edge. It'll work maybe a little bit better. That You know, the edge is still gonna get bunged up, but it's not gonna like break because it's it's closer to a uh, stone chisel or a, a, you know, a metal cold chisel. It's pretty nice to not have to worry, especially with a fiberglass handle, just not to have to worry about the tool. Yeah, expand your wood splitting world a little bit. You'll have a lot more fun. Round out your toolbox a little bit.